Hi, welcome back. I'm Scott Lyman, a Training and Technology Coordinator at Central Texas College, and we're back for another session of Intermediate Excel. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I've never done this before, not even in my face-to-face -face classes. This is Intermediate Excel, but I think what I'm going to do for this, at least this part of the lesson, is I'm going to switch over and show you how um, there are a lot of things in common between Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets. So I'm going to do this session in Google, in Sheets, okay? Uh, it's exact same functions that I'm going to talk about. 99% of what I'm going to do is the same as you would do it in Excel. Matter of fact, I'm following the book, the handout that I created in Excel. And this is the same handout that's available to you down in the description. So um, what I have here is I have my Intermediate Excel workbook and I'm just going to um, right click on this. I have it uploaded to my Google Drive. And I'm going to tell it to open in Google Sheets. So you can say it's you can see it's essentially the same thing, right? Everything is here that was there when we did our our count functions. Um, you know, if I was if I was to do one of my count functions like I did in in part one of this, I would do equals count, and uh, let's say I want to do count if, right? So I arrow down to count if, press tab, just like as if I was in Excel. I put in my range. Um, my range is going to be A colon A. I put a comma to separate my arguments, just like you do in Excel. And now this is a, the terminology is a little different. They have criterion here. Um, criterion is simply what what is it you want me to look for? So for this, I'm going to put F2. And I'm going to close my parentheses and press the Enter key. And here you can see it found 17 occurrences of East, just like it did when we were in Excel. And it also gives you this autofill preview. And we'll look more at that when we get into um, this particular lesson, but I just wanted to show you that that it's almost exactly the same as it is in Excel. So we're going to go to the upper, lower, and proper tabs in the workbook. And these three functions are simply used to change the case of text. For example, uh, well, this isn't a, a good example because these first two are are all uppercase anyway, but the upper function will change this Alana name, which is all lowercase, it'll convert it to all uppercase text. The lower function will convert specified text to all lowercase. So it'll take this Abdul and Adam P and convert them both to lowercase. And then the proper function will capitalize the first letter of every word. So this uh, Alexander D, well, that's not a good one either because it's already, it's already taken care of. Um, but you get the idea, okay? Matter of fact, I can, I can change this. Let me just change this, and I'll make this D a lowercase. There we go. So be able to, you'll be able to see what, what the proper function does. So we're going to start with the upper function, and just like Excel, we start with our equal sign, and we're going to type UPP. And that's all we need to type because it shows you it shows you the function that it found that matches or closely matches what you've typed. So again, we press the tab key and it takes us over into the arguments area. And all it wants to know is what text do you want me to convert to upper? So for this, you simply put the A2 cell reference and you can see that it kind of gives it a different shading, different color background for now. Um, and then when we close our arguments area, it gives it that um, different colored dashed marquee that matches the function color or the argument color in the function. And one of the nice things about Sheets is it also gives you a preview 
of what it's going to look like after the function is applied. So I'll go ahead and press the enter key on this. And then this is this is one of the neat things about sheets. In Excel, we would have to make this our active cell, you know, B2. And they would have to grab the fill handle, which they have the fill handle here in sheets, just like they do in Excel. And we have to drag it down or double click to get it to um, automatically fill the remaining cells. But sheets gives you this suggested autofill. And when you look at that, you say, hey, that's that's exactly what I wanted to do. So all you have to do is click this green check mark and poof, just like magic, everything is done. So huge time savers here. Same thing for lower would uh, type an equal sign and an LOW and that's all we need to type because there's only one function that has that. So we press the tab key. We're going to enter our cell reference for the text we wanted to convert, A2. And we will close the argument area and press enter. Here again, you can see that it's converted the text just like it's supposed to. It's made it all lowercase. You can see the preview for the autofill here. And if that's what you want it to do, then you click the green check mark and it's all filled all the way to the bottom. All right, all 100 names. All lowercase. And then we'll come over to the last one, column D under proper. We'll put our equal sign and we'll type P-R-O-P and that's all we need to type. Press the tab key. Now it wants to know what text you want it to capitalize. We're going to again type A2, close the argument area, press the enter key. And there you can see it's capitalized the first letter only. And it gives you this autofill preview. Click the green check mark, and just like magic, it's all done. So that's the upper, lower, and proper functions. The next thing we're going to take a look at, if you're ready to move on, is something called VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP uh, is used to find specific information or find a specific record if I can use that kind of terminology here, it's used to find a specific record and then bring you back some other information about that record. Now, one of the, one of the things about VLOOKUP is the information that you tell it to find must be in the far left column. All right, must be in the far left column of your data range. Now you could have another <clears throat> another column to the left of this, but you could not include that in your data range. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now terminology is going to be a little bit different here as, as well. So I say data range, but that's an Excel term. So just keep in mind what I'm talking about is the range of cells or the range of information that you want this function to look at. So we're going to come over here to F2. I'll enter my equal sign. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about VLOOKUP first. The V in VLOOKUP stands for vertical. That means your information is arranged in a vertical manner. So your, your headings, your, your field headings, I'm switching over to a little different terminology. It's more of an access terminology, but if we look at this as a database, then these are our field headings, the name field, the number field, the score. We usually refer to them in Excel as column headings. However, if you have this information set up in a different manner, uh, for example, maybe you have your, your headings at the first row. Okay, so name, phone number, score. This is a horizontal setup. Okay, this is vertical, this is horizontal. I'm showing you this because VLOOKUP has a cousin, and that cousin's name is HLOOKUP. So if you have your information set up 
in this format, the horizontal format. You don't have to change it to the vertical lookup to use VLOOKUP. You don't have to change it to the vertical style to use VLOOKUP. You can use HLOOKUP. Now, I'm not going to show you HLOOKUP because they work exactly the same. I'm just going to show you VLOOKUP. So, again, I'm going to go to F2. I'm going to enter my equal sign and I will type VL because, well, that's the beginning of VLOOKUP. And you'll notice that that's the only function available. So I'll press the tab key. And there are three arguments. Well, four actually, but only three are absolutely required. You have the search key, which is the first argument, then the range and the index. And then they also want to know if it's sorted true or false. So the search key, the search key is where is this function going to find the name, right? Then it's a name in this case. Where is it going to find the name that it's supposed to look up? Well, we're going to enter that name here in cell E2. So we just click in cell E2. Then we'll put a comma to separate our argument area. Next, it wants to know the range. So earlier I was referring to this as a data range. So here they just call it a range. So my range of cells, I can either click and drag to select a specific range of cells, or if I wanted to allow Sheets or Excel um, to look in a larger range of cells, maybe I want to leave room for this. Uh, look, I'm pointing to the screen again like you can see me. Um, but I want to leave room for, the, for my list of, of people to expand or contract. I don't want to be specific and say, look in this range of cells. And if I add another name, then I have to go in and change my function. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just tell it to look from A1 to, oh, I don't know, maybe C500. That's, that's a pretty big range for me anyway. Uh, if you've got 500 people, then you could do A1 to C600 or 700. It's, it's up to you. Or if you want to be bold and adventurous, you can just go A colon C and have it look in all, I don't know how many rows are in sheets specifically, but in Excel, there's over a million rows. So you're telling Excel um, to look in these one million rows in these three columns for the information we're looking at. So that might be just a little bit overkill. So we'll go A1 colon C500, just to, you know, make it not think too hard. And one of the neat things about Sheets is it, it gives you the explanation of what each of these um, arguments is down at the bottom. So, for example, we're here in the search key. See, it's, it's a different color. So down here, it tells you what the search key is. It's the value to search for, right? For example, 42 cats or... I-24. We're using E2. Look for whatever value I type into E2. You move over into the range and it tells you what the range is. It's the range to consider for the search. What cells am I going to be looking in to find and bring you back information? The next argument that we're going to put in, so we'll put a comma to separate, and that's our index. What column index do you want me to bring you back? We're going to put a name under lookup in cell E2. And in return, Sheets or Excel, depending on which one you're working in, is going to bring you back a bit of information either from column B or column C. But it doesn't want to know what column letter to bring back. It wants to know what column Number. If you look down here, it says the column index of the value to be returned where the first column in the range is number one. So the names is column one. If we want the phone number, we're going to put a two. If we want the scores, we're going to put a three. So since we're under the phone number field heading here, we'll put a two to bring us back a phone number. Now the next function or the next argument is, is optional. You see how it's in these square brackets? That means it's optional. You don't have to put something in. 
But if we look down here, it says that, that this is sorted, indicates whether the column to be searched, the first column, is sorted, in which case the closest match for the search key will be returned. Well, ours isn't sorted. It's not in alphabetical order. We want it to find an exact match. When we type a name in, um, in cell E2, we want it to bring back an exact match or find the exact match and bring me back the phone number. So we're going to enter false in here as our um, is sorted because it's not sorted. You would use the sorted, you would enter true in here if you were looking for numbers and you weren't looking for a specific number, but you wanted something, well, bring me back what's as close as you can find to 500. But in that case, you should sort by that column. All right. So we have our all of our arguments in there. We'll close the argument area. We'll press the enter key and you'll see sheets brings me back an NA. Technically, this is an error, but it's 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 an error because of what you did or what you didn't do. It says that it did not find a value in the VLOOKUP evaluation. There's nothing here in cell E2 for it to look at. So if I put a name in here, Sam Spam, press the tab key, then it brings me back Sam's phone number. That's how this works. It's real simple. And if, I mean, sure, you can say, well, I can just manually look over here and see what Sam's phone number is. But what if you got a list of a few hundred or a few thousand people? You're going to scroll through that list to find a specific name to get a phone number? No, use this. It's way easier. Way easier. Now, if this field, this cell, is empty and we get this error notification, if you don't want that error notification, then you can wrap your function in, in another function. This is called nesting functions. We'll look more at nesting functions in the advanced Excel. But this is just a little bit of nesting. So if I don't want that hashtag NA to show up when there's no search value entered, I can wrap my VLOOKUP in an if error function. So I type my if error and then put my left parenthesis, which is the opening for the argument area. So the value, the value for this argument is simply the result of the VLOOKUP function. If VLOOKUP returns a value, then that's what it's going to display. This is the value if true. Okay, so if if this comes back true or with a positive result, then it's going to display that value. What we want to add is a comma because this is our second argument. We want to enter a value if, it, if it's an error. And I'm simply going to put double quotes, which is going to display a blank space. And then I'll close my argument area. Press the Enter key, and just like magic, that NA is gone. So the function is still there. You can see the function if I make that my active cell, and you look up here on the formula bar. And if I come over here to E2 and I enter a name, press Enter, then it brings me back that person's phone number. All right, too easy. So let's let's take a look at this one more time, and this time we'll have it bring back the score. We'll enter our equal sign. We'll just start with the if error. There we have our, our function available. Press tab. Our value is going to be VLOOKUP. Press tab. Our search key is going to be E6, comma. The range is going to be A1 colon C500, just like we did before comma. The index, this time we want it to bring back the score, so we put it the number 3, comma. And again, it's not indexed. We want exact matches, so we put false, close our argument area, press the Enter key, blank cell, because it's an error, right? If error, display a blank cell. 
Now you'll notice I didn't put the double quotes in this time, and that's because that last the if error um, argument is actually optional. Let me show you. All right? See, is sorted. You see, it's in square brackets. So if I don't enter a value for that, um, you'll notice that if I if I go to my my argument error. Um, this value if error is optional. So if I don't put anything in there, it's just going to display a blank cell. Okay? But to be, to be technically correct and to make sure that every base is covered, we can put that comma and then the double quotes. Or maybe you want something inside those double quotes. Maybe you want a, a pair of asterisks. All right? So there's, there's our error indicator. It doesn't say NA, some big error. It just shows two asterisks. <clears throat> if I put a name in here, it brings me back the score. So that, <clears throat> pardon me, that is VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP. Now there's another function. It's a fairly new function. It's actually a database function. It's called dget. D G E T, dget. And it works similar to VLOOKUP. The difference is with VLOOKUP, the far left column of your range must be the information that you're telling it to look up, right? It must be, if I bring up the, the function, this must be the search key. The search key must be in this far left column. With dget, you're not limited to that. You can, you can use any column. I could tell it to find a phone number and bring me back a name. Okay, so let's let's try that. Let's let's do that. We'll get rid of that. And one of the things about dget is you have to have the same column headings in your lookup area that you do in your range. So I'm going to put I'm going to put name here, and then we have phone number there. So I'll. Come over here to name, and I'll begin my function with the equal sign, and then I'll type D, G, and that's that's the only thing I have to type because it's displaying now the D get function. I press the tab key, and it takes me over into my argument area. Now with these database functions, you'll find out when we get into the advanced um, Excel, I talk more about these database functions. The arguments for all of these da database functions, and for the most part, you can tell it's a database function because it starts with a D. Okay, D get, database get. Then we have um, D count, database count. Okay, so it's it's kind of the giveaway there. So. I'm put my function here. Um, so my database is again a1 colon, and I'll make the expandable C500. That's my database. My field. What it wants to know is what field am I going to bring back to you? All right, and by field it means um, column. I know it's kind of odd, but remember I, I referred to these as field headings earlier. Okay, so if we wanted to bring back the name, if I enter a phone number, then my my field is going to be one, and then we'll put a comma to to separate our argument. And now it wants to know our criteria. What am I going to look for? And this. This criteria must include the field heading. All right. 
must include the field heading. So my criteria is actually going to be F1 and F2. Okay, F1 and F2. So I'll close my argument area, press the Enter key, and again, I get that error, and you know how to wrap it in an if error, so I'm not going to go through that again. But if I come over here, and if I put in a phone number, say 555-1010, press Enter, you'll see it brings me back Lucy in the sky. And there it is, 1010, Lucy in the sky. If I put in a different phone number, 555, maybe 1313, it brings me back Joe Schmo. So there's Joe Schmo. So that's the big difference between DGET and VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, um, your key, your lookup key must be in the first column of the range. With DGET, it doesn't matter. Okay? That's the big difference. So hopefully, hopefully this hasn't confused you too much. Um, me working in, in Google Sheets instead of Excel. But I just wanted to show you the flexibility because maybe not everybody has Excel at home. But most everybody can get Google Sheets. All you have to have is a Gmail email address and you have access to Google Docs and Google Sheets and Google Slides. So with that, I'm going to say thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. We'll talk to you later.